There's not much to do when all I can. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Rosa if you're new here. If not, welcome back. Today we are going to be making three DIY ball decors. And we're starting off with our autumn cork wreath. I am starting off by cutting some styrofoam. This is some styrofoam that came in the box of my instant pot and I thought since I don't have those round styrofoam wreath forms, um, I'll put a picture here so you can see what I'm talking about. I think in North America you can usually find these at a dollar store, but here we don't have these types of things so I just had to find a way to make my own so here I am just shaping this the best that I can and this makes a huge mess beware if you do the same um, just know you have a big mess to clean up and it's not easy to clean up I had to clean mine up with the vacuum if you don't have a vacuum good luck now I just laid down a tablecloth that I usually use when I paint or do any crafts on top because we are going to be using hot glue for this project and I don't want to ruin my table or my tablecloth so make sure you just protect your surface and we are going to get out our corks um, I have a lot of corks if you know someone who works in a restaurant you can ask them to keep them for you that's what I do my uncle works in a restaurant and I just ask him to keep the corks that he uses every day um, instead of putting it in the garbage. It's waste putting it in the garbage. If not, you can find them in store, but it's best if you can find them for free, right? Anyways, I just start gluing it on the styrofoam, and there's no way to do this. I just started gluing them randomly and tried to fit them in like a puzzle. I wanted this to look as, um, random as possible, like as you could say. I thought it looked a lot more pretty this way than it would as a pattern or all in a straight line. I don't know if you can imagine what I'm trying to say. I've seen cork wreaths on Pinterest where they're all lined up and I think this way looks a lot more pretty. But it's really up to you, you do what you want. Now, I did use a good amount of corks. I had um, a bag full, like those shopping bags, the cheap plastic ones that you buy at the store. Um, I had one of those bags full of cork and I did not use all of them up. I used about half of that bag up. Now, I can't tell for sure how many I used and I really don't feel like counting it, so... But that's a relative because your styrofoam uh, form could be smaller or bigger than mine and you could use more or less than I can. Just know that you're going to need a big amount. When you are gluing these, you want to try and hide the glue. So what I would do is I'd first place each cork on the wreath, trying to find its position. And once I knew what position I wanted, I tried to look and see where the glue would touch or where the cork touches. So I know in which spots to put the glue. And I'd, that way I'd use um, as m less glue possible, but also enough to keep it stable. And it worked. Just because if you have a lot of glue showing, it will be a little um, unpleasant to the eyes. So you can keep that in mind. Another helpful tip is maybe you would like to use um, you know, some kind of protection for your fingers, some gloves, or I've seen those people use like the finger caps so you don't burn yourself with the hot glue. I burned myself four times 
in this whole entire process of making this wreath and it's not pleasant at all the glue is very hot it will melt your skin just warning you there if you have the protection use it something that I would change if I could um, about this or about my process is I think I would paint the styrofoam before gluing the um, cork on it I think I would paint it like a neutral color um, a beige or a light brown an orange something that doesn't make the white pop through so much obviously you can't um, cover all of the white there will be cracks but I will show you a trick on how to fill those out after we will be putting things on this wreath so in the end you can't really see it but if it is painted or if the foam is colored it's harder to see than if it than as it is white so here is the wreath completely covered in the cork it is a bit heavy probably around four kilos um, in pounds I think that would be around eight pounds I'm not sure the complete conversion and here I am just showing you a few things that I decided to take out to use to decorate um, my wreath so I have the buttons um, some jewels some pine cones I had some flowers there I have that raffia but I didn't end up using that raffia um, I also did end up using those wooden beads. There's some ribbon, just a little bit of everything. Um, and I'm going to start off with my bow. I had already tied um, a piece of rope or string, whatever you would like it to call it, before tying the bow. And you can see it there I'm behind the ribbon. And I just wanted to keep it there so that the ribbon can after cover it. And now I'm just tying my bow. There are so many different types of bows that you can find online. I just looped it twice to make it a two loop bow. There you go. And it's right there so I know where the position of the bow is now. And next I start gluing, gluing down my pine cones. If I had acorns, I would glue acorns on this. But we can't find acorns here in the Azores. It's not something that grows on trees here. We don't even have the trees that grow the acorns. But we do have pine cones. Right after the pine cones, I decided to add in the floral part. So like the flowers and the leaves. And this is just an orange bouquet that I had bought here at the Chinese store. Um, the Chinese store is kind of like a, I don't know how you would say it. It's not like a dollar store because not everything is cheap there. But it's an all-purpose store. They're, they sell everything except food, I guess you could say. Um, so I had found this orange bouquet there. They don't sell like fall leaves or anything like that. So I just had to find something that would work. And I really like the colors of these flowers. They gave me fall vibes. So I picked them up. I have actually picked up two bo um, two bouquets. <laughs> I don't know how to talk at this hour. I am voiceovering this part of the voiceover. And I think it's past 11 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, after a day of work. Anyways, I'm cutting off the flowers from the vine. And since um, the flowers have like a wire inside of it, I don't really glue the flowers in, I just stick it into the styrofoams in, in between the cracks. I found that really handy. It's not going to go anywhere because it's stuck inside the styrofoam and it's also filling in the cracks. So The leaves I did have to glue in, I just stuck a little bit of glue and pushed them in. Sometimes I use tweezers to help me. Um, I really like the colors of this or these leaves because it's a very muted green, um, gives me fall vibes as well. Now when you're making a wreath, I recommend you start with your biggest uh, elements and then you finish off with the smaller ones because the smaller ones are like fillers. And next I'm putting on these pearl beads that I had. I am using so many reused materials. These are all buttons and beads. 
that I had in containers from old sweaters and old necklaces like the beads I can't remember what the beads are from but um, I had them in a container I like that little white touch and those big buttons were from a sweater that my grandma had cut off um, and kept the beads and then I had these golden jewels that I decided to put all around the wreath because it was a small element it gave a little bit of shine um, not too much though and then on the bow I wanted to put something in the middle of the bow just to complement it and I was indecisive between two buttons you could see there um, but I ultimately decided to go with the orange button and okay here's that little tip that I had told you about to fill in between the cracks you can just grab some of the ribbon that you have um, I'm using the brown ribbon and I'm just stuffing them into the little cracks anything that's like very obvious that you can see the white through just stick that ribbon in into those cracks it will cover it up but if you remember or if you think it's a better idea you could just paint the styrofoam and there's your problem solved okay so now for the string part um, the part where the wreath is going to hang I tied two knots one in the middle of the string and one on the top because you never know what um, height that you want the wreath to hang off and I just gave myself two options and there you have it the wreath is complete and this wreath makes me so happy I loved how this turned out it is so beautiful and the best part is I only spent maybe three euros making this wreath I used mostly reusable items, recycled items, um, and things that you can find on the floor, like the pine cones. So for the next project, I started uh, sorting my cord it's by size, and oh yeah, here I am showing you that there was a cricket in the bag, I heard something move in the bag, and I thought it was from my head, and then and now I, I saw a cricket, I got all startled, but it didn't really do anything bad, I ended up killing it, I'm sorry. Anyways, as I was saying, I sorted it by size, and then I started gluing them together, I started off by the middle row. If you don't know, I am actually making a pocket. This is something that I've seen all over Pinterest. So, you're going to need exactly 24 of these. And I say to use the same size because if you don't use the same size, it will be uneven. But um, in the past, I have used different size cords together. And it's not that bad. It just. I think it's a little better if you do make them even, or at least make them be all the same size, but if you can't find it, it's no problem. The first one that I made um, is still very pretty, it just isn't as um, flat as this one. And this is optional, but I wanted to add some leaves to this pumpkin, so I didn't have any muted color leaves, so I actually just painted those brown, and then I added a few touches of orange later. And here on the pumpkin, I dry brushed some orange on a couple of the corks. I think it gives it a rustic vibe. This is also optional, or you could paint all the cork um, orange, it's really up to you. This is really up to your preference, and the stem I also painted brown, but you'll see in the in a little bit that the first pumpkin, or the other pumpkin that I show you, I didn't actually paint the stem or add any leaves, so you can see two options of uh, styling your pumpkin. And then I just wrapped some raffia around it, tied a bow, and I actually think this looks very cute to decorate your house and it's something very cheap to make but also looks very very beautiful 
there's so many things that you can do with cork so don't forget if you're drinking wine champagne whatever save this cork you're going to use them in the future i guarantee you Our heroes have been forgotten Our heroes so brave and bold Our heroes have been forgotten Our So this is a very simple DIY This is more painting than anything else I had this old box sitting around that my mom had And I had painted one of these before for a sewing kit um, But it's done, that's at my mom's house so I can't show you um, but since I didn't have any father core whatsoever, because I can't find any of that stuff here in the Azores, people don't decorate for fall here, so I just had to kind of make my own, and I thought, I see so many signs in Decorate With Me's, and why not paint my own? I thought this box was going to be perfect for that, so then I drew up a design in my sketchbook, and then I sketched it on the box and started painting. There's really no rhyme or reason to this. I don't use that that many colors. I wanted to keep it all in the same color scheme. Um, I painted the letters brown. I just look up some signs on Pinterest to give me some inspiration. And this is what I ended up coming out with. Um, it's very simple, not that hard to make. It just takes a little bit of time to get that look that you want but it's a very easy project and I didn't spend any money on this um, if you have any pieces of wood laying around home you could use that to make a sign it doesn't have to be a box it can be an old piece of wood sand it down and draw on top of it and paint to your heart's content if you have a Cricut you could use a Cricut too with the vinyl I don't have a Cricut and I don't know if I'll get one in the future, maybe, no, you never know, but I do like to paint. I have a history of painting and drawing, so why not take advantage of the time to paint something, relax, you know, it's a good project too, you can do this with a friend, a family member. Anyways, this is my last DIY for you guys in this video. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite and if you're going to try to do any of these. I would also like to know, have you started decorating for fall? And if not, when do you usually start decorating for fall? I usually get into the fall vibes in September, but since I've been seeing so many things online already in August, I think I'm getting into the fall vibes a little bit earlier this year. Since it's starting to get a little bit more chilly this week, I am finally, finally actually feeling the fall vibes, so very happy about that. Anyways, this is the end of this video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to be coming out with so many more fall videos. I cannot wait to start getting into the fall season. Um, yeah, I hope to see you guys next time. Goodbye. You should know it. You've been gone for way too long. I can lay down beside you I would, I would When nothing really matters That's all I want